We're live here with uh, James, who uh, we got connected on Instagram. He, he's going to help me with uh, the Starstock SIFC uh, collecting competition. I'm currently in third place, but I uh, have some moves I, I need to make. Thanks for helping me out, James. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, so just to kind of give a little example of what, uh, how we got in contact here. Big Delhi fan, obviously, growing up in, uh, in Toledo, Ohio. And, um, you know, all my friends were huge Cleveland fans. And 2016 was a, it was a fun year when, uh, you know, you guys were, were cruising along the playoffs. And um, always a big Delhi fan and obviously a huge fan of Star Stock. So when I saw your name, I was like, okay, go. We got to get Delhi that championship, just like how Delhi brought us the championship. Um, so, yeah, so got a little uh, post going, got a few of my buddies to, to tag you in a few things. And boom, before I knew it, I was drinking with my friends out on, um, you know, watching some football. And I got a message from Delhi. Hey, what's uh, what set something up? I was like, hey, you can't you can't say no to the goat. So absolutely. So here we are. So super excited. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for coming on and helping me out. And how did you get started in the card industry? Yeah, so uh, honestly, I've been in it my whole life. Um, you know, I've been, been buying and selling cards since since probably when I was, you know, eight or nine, ten years old. Um, I'll never forget the, the hours of standing in card shows and my mom standing behind me and um, wheeling and dealing with you know people five times my age and they're trying to rip me off and I'd be arguing with them and my mom's just sitting in the back laughing and um, it, it evolved you know made good relationships um, you know it's crazy because you know back when I first started it was all in person now everything's e-commerce uh, different platforms and now I have you know f you know different card friends all over the country and, and talk to them daily um, so just fun how, you know, like where, how I started in the evolution of, of my collection and then also, you know, kind of growing it with the industry. Um, so yeah, to sum it up, you know, that's, that's kind of how I got started. No, that's very so. cool. And then, um, I mean, you're, I didn't know this until, uh, you, you messaged me later on after we'd already set this up, but you're actually, uh, an investor in star stock, uh, like I am. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I was watching watching some you know some other platform or some some YouTube channel, and um, Scott Greenberg, the, our CEO of Starstock, you know, popped up and uh, gave us the rundown of the company. And I immediately, you know, I'm a finance guy, you know, big big finance guy. Always love stocks and love that aspect, love the the visuals of it. Instantly emailed him because Scott is, Scott is such a great guy where every time he gets off of a, any kind of interview or anything, he says, here's my personal email, message me. And I remember him, I remember I emailed him um, like everything. Hey, we, like you guys need to change all of these things to, to make it in the industry. You know, I love you guys. Like I love the platform, but you know, these are the things you need to change. Like kind of like very hard, strong feedback from the beginning instantly emailed me back like i would say probably 15 minutes later he goes dude thank you for this can we set up like wow this dude cares um and yeah grew our relationship like helping him out and then you know i had the opportunity to invest in it and no doubt uh absolutely no doubt it's it's such a great platform and uh, i could go on for hours so i'm, I'm gonna stop there <laughs> but um but yep big investor and love it love star stock <laughs> As somebody who's deep in the industry, why is Starstock, you know, the the best platform out there to to buy and, and sell cards? Yeah, um, that's a great question because there are a lot of options to, you know, in our industry for for different platforms these days, and you know, all of them have their plus and minuses. But with, with Starstock, you know, as you can see, my collection back here, as it keeps growing, you know, this isn't you know, my fiance downstairs is pounding on the table every night saying, we, you know, you have too many cards. So you have the aspect of, you know, a secure system of, of it sitting in vault with security, um, zero submission fees, um, you know, great, great pictures. 
another thing that I love is you can literally go on your phone and look at your inventory. So if you said, hey, go find me, you know, 10, del you know, daily autographs, I would have to go look through boxes for hours to find these. But instead, in Starstock, I can literally go in and type your name in and boom, I can see exactly what it is. Um, so, you know, that's a huge factor for me when you're talking about a pretty big collection. Um, and then you go into the aspect of, you know, the, um, the, the fees alone. The fees are super cheap. You know, they'll, they'll beat anyone in the industry. Um, and then you have even just like the, the grade them, A, B, and C. So, you know, there's a lot of cards where you're buying, like for me, I'm buying tons and tons of cards and I'm trying to grade cards. You know, I'm buying, let's say I'm buying 100 cards off a different platform, maybe five or 10 of them are gradable. But with Starstock, you know, they have the pre of the A, Bs, and Cs, and with it, with it already broken down, like, you know what I'm buying. I know what I'm buying, and I'll pay a premium for that. Honestly, peace of mind, um, knowing what I'm buying, and, um, you know, I could go on and on, but that's, yeah, it's going to be a great platform. It's evolving every single day. Um, it's ran by a fantastic group, and the the evolution of just the site itself. Every week, there's a new update. Every week, you know, the team is getting new, new like on what's next. You know, how do we improve? So, um, super exciting stuff. It's incredible where it's at now from how it just launched in April. And there's already what? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's like over two hundred thousand cards on there already. Yeah, I, th nice. I think there's, there's almost uh, over 250,000 now. And um, it's fun to uh, check in each day to see how many more they're adding each day, which is which is really cool. So the the reason for our call, I mean, you, you think you can help me with uh, my uh, competition. Obviously, I'm a competitive guy. Um, I've, I've watched uh, the NFL, you know, since I've, been over in America, but I'm an Australian trying to win this American football competition, which I think uh, would be a pretty sweet victory for me. Um, I'm sitting in third place right now, being bouncing between third and six. So I'll pull up my portfolio here um, so you can see what we're working with. So for those that don't know, uh, Starstock of had this competition. Maybe I'll go back here. Can you see my screen there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're in week six of 17. You see the leaderboard here. I'm sitting in uh, third place there with a whole heap of card experts, fantasy football experts. Um, and I, I'm doing pretty well, but uh, there's always, you know, ways you can improve and I'm always looking to improve. So I'd love to know what, what you think, uh, I can do here as, uh, we got, so, yeah, you, you go for it. The, these are my cards here. I went pretty hard at the Joe Burrow cards, obviously, um, you know, being a rookie with a huge following and, um, you know, I think he's been doing really well so far and has a lot of room to continue to improve. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking this pretty easy for me. Um, setting it right up. Uh, classic uh, Delhi alley oop here is what some people would call it. <laughs> but, anyways, you know, what you have going here is great. So, you, you know, you invested in, I like how, you know, one thing that I always try and do is, is, you know, my collection, I try and do like a portfolio, like just like how I would for any kind of investments. So the two PSA 10s that you have, you know, they're, they're a big chunk of your, you know, your allocation of funds. Um, you know, you didn't, the Saquon, I don't, you know, that, that, that was a good buy at the time. Um, but one thing that, you know, you got to be careful with is definitely injuries with the NFL more than let's say some of the other sports. Um, but I still think that's a great buy. Cooper Cup, great buy. Um, you know, I think, you know, where you're coming with that is great. Um, the Dalton Schultz, I'm sure you got that for, you know, pretty cheap. So, you know, that, that's a good, um, good buy as well. The, I like the, the young guys that you bought. Honestly, if, if you were to buy any of the young guys, you hit it straight right on the head. So, um, you know, so that, that's just, fantastic. I'll, I'll give you a bit of my thought process into that. Like you said, I, I wanted to go with a couple of 
you know, PSA 10s, um, obviously they cost more, but um, not as many of them out there. Um, obviously, you know, um, Barkley got injured and hope, hope he has a speedy recovery. You know, never want to see that. Um, but went with those two main guys. And then obviously the Joe Burrow got four of those cards. Um, and then with the other guys, uh, I, I was on um, fantasy football sites. I think it was Roto Wire. I was looking to see who uh, played well at training camp. So I did a bit of a deep dive on those. Um, and I think the Chase uh, Claypool had like four touchdowns last week or two weeks ago. Um, and then uh, CD Lamb has, has been doing really well as well. I'll, I'll just check what I got this card for. Um, I think I, yeah, I got it for three, $3 and, and $2.99. And the last sale was for $9.99. So that's, that's been a pretty, pretty good outcome so far. Go back. Good buy for sure. Yeah, and obviously, um, you know, none of this is uh, investment advice, and um, you know, it's just a fun, fun competition with with stuff stock that I'm doing. But what what would you recommend I do here? I mean, um, what are we week six weeks in of a 17 week season? Um, who who should I be holding on to? Who should I be, you know, trying to sell? Um, and is there anyone? out there I should be looking to buy after we try to make those sales. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, just to kind of give you a rundown of, of the industry here, you know, with, you know, the cards that you have, the prison draft, they're in their college uniforms. So those are great because, you know, they're, they're the rookies of this year. They're going to have a lot of hype, but that's, you know, if you look at the longevity of that, they don't really hold the value as they would in their NFL jerseys. So in the beginning, when they first release, you know, they have a strong, you know, th there's a lot of liquidity in them and, you know, they sell for a little bit higher than they would in a year from now. But when the new prism uh, NFL, you know, NFL unis come out, which is November 18th, these cards won't hold value. They're kind of be pushed aside and people will be going to the, towards those because those are the, the iconic cards. So even for myself, I buy a lot of those in the beginning before the season. And I almost look at it like, like, um, like I'm, how I do research for fantasy football. I'm buying the same players, buying players before games. Um, but if it was me, if this was my collection, I'm trying to liquid, liquidate as much of the, the college uniforms as I can. So when this new product comes out, I have, have you know, extra funds to be spending money on on that because those will be the first things to uh depreciate um so that that would be my first thing um you know with that i think the the psa 10s you know what you have of cooper cup and saquon saquon you're probably not going to see much fluctuation in price i think you're going to hit i think you've already hit your your hockey stick on that um where you know you just hold that and once you see a good price you know, you might have to take a loss because also with the competition, with it being a shorter frame, you know, you have a different strategy, which makes this even more fun yeah. um, because then you only have a certain amount of allocated funds. So that's one where you just want to kind of keep an eye on. Um, same with Cooper Cup, though. Honestly, if you if you see a good price for that, um, I would take it because you're going to want money to come out for for these for the for the new prism that comes out because that's the stuff that will if a player has a good game. Those, those the prices on those cars are going to be the first ones to appreciate rather than some of the others. Okay. With, with that being said, um, with these other um, cards with the draft pick ones in their college uniform, should I be trying to sell those even if it is at a small loss, just so I have um, some money to spend on those, uh, you know, rookie prisms in their NFL uniforms when they come out? Yeah. So, you know, I never, you know, I think it's too early to, to sell for a loss. The way that I look at it is I look at different releases of all the different products coming up. So I look at it like a time frame. So I have until now, until November 18th, which is the, the, the uh, where Prism, the regular one will come out. So you have up to there to keep an eye on them. And then 
basically you will want to, um, you know, sell during that time. Um, if you can sell it, you know, early or later, it's fine. Um, but then you can reallocate to funds. So let's say you, you sold all of your cards today. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I would be buying would be like a stable card, like an iconic, even, you know, more expensive card, like your Mahomes, Lamar, Kyler, Josh Allen, those where you don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, unless an injury where you can, they're high liquidity where you could sell them as soon as November 18th hits. And then you can reinvest your funds for maybe a little more riskier, higher, you know, you know, higher ceiling, like higher gains uh, for you. Yeah. And then I, one of the things I was weighing up when I was, you know, trying to do some research on this was do I go for, you know, the superstar, you know, with the more expensive card um, where there's not many of them, um, but then there's less volume of sales or do I go for, you know, more of a mid-range player or even the star player, but um, not as exclusive of a card where there's a lot more volume and, and cards being traded on it? What do you think? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the way I look at it is, and I, I try and do um, 80-20. So 80% is more of like your, you know, your stable, um, higher end PSA 10s. PSA 10s are, you know, good no matter what the card is. That's going to be the best card you can get is a PSA 10 of that player, you know, of that set or vice versa. So I like the aspect, like you kind of already did that with, you know, your thought process for that. Yeah. So it's kind of just separate, like spreading the risk where, you know, and that's where another, another thing I wanted to bring up where, you know, use that 20% for that, that risky, like, um, you know, where someone could come out of nowhere that you, you know, you, you read, or you, you feel like this person's going to do pretty well um, and take that risk with that 20%. But let's say if that 20% doesn't pan out and you have to sell it and take your losses and take half, half your, you're only really losing 10% of your allocation of funds mm. and your 80% will, will pick you up. Let's say your 80%, you know, gets you at a, an extra 35%. Um, so it's all kind of a numbers game um, with that. And with this competition, it's fun because it's basically going to end like at the, at the Super Bowl, right? The last day of the Super Bowl. Yeah. I, like think, it, I the, think it's 24 after hours Super after the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. So the way I would do it is, you know, basically buy and sell during, during the, the year and the playoffs. And, you know, when you're getting close to the playoffs, that's when you really want to be shrinking your inventory to bring in more of your stable, you know, tier A, quote unquote, tier A type of uh, cards that you know that you, that, that you can sell at the last day without a problem and without taking a loss. Um, but yeah, so that, that's another thing too, is there's a lot of factors like of looking at playoffs, like, you know, when you're getting to week 12, even week 15, like close to that, you're going to be wanting to transition your players into players that you think will be making a run in the playoffs. Yeah, no. So I, I think, yeah, it would probably be good to try to do a, a few more trades. I, I don't think I've done any so far, but, um, and then I have, you know, no uh, money left to buy any other cards right now. So I think, yeah, if I try to maybe sell a couple of them, I've, I've listed them for pretty high prices just in case um, somebody buys them. Um, so, you know, if they have a big game or, or something like that, or somebody wants to pay, pay a higher price. Um, so yeah, no, I'll, I'll try to get some of those listed and uh, maybe, maybe watch the games a bit more closely on a Sunday and, and see if somebody is having a big game like a, a Chase Claypool who had four touchdowns the other day. I was pretty excited to, to see that. Yeah. And one little tidbit that I, that I wanted to bring up too is, and this is the reason why I love star stock because the way I look at it is, and I look at certain players and certain teams and I'll look at their schedules. Let's say, like, for instance, the Bills play the Jets next. The Jets are obviously not the team where the best of defense. So, for instance, they're playing the Jets, the Pats, and the Seahawks. 
So I'm looking at a three game spread and I'm looking at maybe, okay, who's undervalued, who might have a huge game because everyone loves buying and selling the cards of the, you know, the player that's on all the highlights because yeah. I do that too. I'm like, Oh, I forgot. Uh, Chase Claypool, I, you know, I honestly, I forgot how good he was. And then the last two games he went off. I'm like, okay, now I'm looking into his cards. So also that's what brings in the, the fun part where you can use that 20% where you're, you're doing that research. And um, I literally, what I do is I, I have, I write down the teams of the quarterbacks and the different players that I, that I like to, you know, that I think have a lot of potential and I'm looking at their three game spread and I'm like, Ooh, there's a juicy match. Like they're going to have an easy three games. I'm going in and buying their cards cheap, relisting them um, at a, at a higher price and, and kind of using that to my advantage because with star stock, I don't have to wait a week for, to buy it, get the card and then have them send it to me. And then I have to list it and, you know, return all, I don't have to deal with all that. I can literally buy it before, you know, let's say at noon on Sunday before the game and sell it during the game without, having to even touch the card. Um, so you can use that to your advantage and don't forget about the big games. So Monday night, Sunday night, the games that a lot of people are like the masses are watching that one game, use that to your advantage where, Oh, there's going to be a lot of people watching. So-and-so tonight. Yeah. I mean, like if you think a, a little bit ahead of time, you can even sell that call. Like you could buy it on a Thursday and you could sell it even before the game and still make an easy 10% you know, it's all about numbers. So, you know, as long as you're making a profit on every single car, you're, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to hit a home run every single time. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's a good point. I think um, if, if there's profits there to be had, I should maybe yeah take it off the board and, and be comfortable. Uh, yeah. Sitting on, on a little bit of cash, just waiting for a good opportunity. Like you said, um, I think I think that's great. I'm I'm gonna try to implement some of those things, and then I think I'll. Um, if you got any hot tips coming up, once I've sold a few of these, um, you'll have to let me know. But thanks for doing this. Where where's the best uh, place for for people to find you? I know you've got uh, an Instagram account. Yep. So I have uh, an Instagram where you know I do a lot of different bits on on content for for uh, buying and selling cards at star stock investor. And uh, I just recently opened a YouTube channel as well, which is um, a sports card, sports card and in, uh, investment group. So really excited about that. It's honestly just going to be a hodgepodge of different things that, that I've learned through the industry. Um, you know, my main goal is just to give back. I'm not going to be selling anything. Um, I just want it to be fun, talk cards, and, uh, you know, my biggest thing is I want people, I want dialogue. I want people to tell me what they want to learn or hear advice and just have a good time. Um, I have no expectations of where it's going to go. Um, just, just excited for it. So just want to grow the hobby and, and, um, and, and help others the way, you know, the way that people have helped me. Yeah, no, that, that's awesome. And I'll, I'll make sure we link to this, uh, when, when it goes up, but, uh, Thanks very much for doing this. It was fun to, for me to learn more. And thanks for those tips. I'm glad that you're, you know, a star stock brother and uh, yeah, excited to, to see you win the championship again here. And um, yeah, bring it home, man. <laughs> we'll see what I can do. Thank you. Thanks, Jace.